Hey, good evening. Hope you've had a good day today. As um, as they, they used to say on the Andy Griffith Show, hope you've had a good Sabbath. And uh, it has been a good day uh, uh, being with all of you this morning and uh, being with you once again this evening. I want to... I want to, to do something just a, a little bit a little bit different tonight or this evening if I may. And I, I want to know, and, and there's a reason. I want to know if you're watching. And I want to know if you're if you're a part of our our service tonight, if you will and you want to. Because I don't see everybody. I see uh, I see 18 people or I see the number 18 as far as viewing. So if you, if you will, uh, just, just, just put a, a, an emoji or it doesn't matter what well, it does matter. Uh, just put some type of emoji or just say I'm here and I want to, I want to just pause just a second. And, uh, and, and if you would do that, if you would do that, please. And uh, now there's a method to my madness and, 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 and you'll 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 probably never know why I'm doing it, but uh, but I just want to I just want to see something uh, if it's okay. Um, okay, Miss Pam, hey Miss Sharon, good to see y'all. Hey Nicole. Hey uh, Nicole Ellen. Good to see you. Thank you. Mary Ann. Hey, Miss Marietta. What we got? Nicole, Nicole, Mary Ann, Marietta. All right. Miss Martha. Terry and Lois. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, Wendy. Thank you. Hey, Jamie. Miss Sue. Mr. Thomas. Hey, Miss Martha. Okay, I'm, I'm only going to do this for just a couple more seconds, so I thank you for your patience. Hey, Mr. Sonny, Miss Patsy. Hey, Miss Joyce. Is Mr. Miss Joyce, is Mr. Don with you? Is he behaving? Mr. Don, Miss Judy, hello, hello. Hey, Kelly, I was just talking to Brian about you, and um, we're going to, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you later. Hey, Mr. Dave, Miss Ellen, God bless y'all. Thank you. Miss Judy, Mr. Don, Mr. Pinky. Hello, sir. God bless you. Hey, Miss Francis. What did you say, Brian? That's been sure. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> Brian is, is, uh, hey, uh, yeah. Hey, Miss Wink. Thank you, Chris. Y'all are y'all are always with me. Thank you so much. Y'all are y'all encourage me. All of you do. Thank you, Mr. Randy's with Miss Sharon. All right. Hey, thank you for taking just a second uh, to do that. Um, I, I I really I really I really I really appreciate it. <laughs> I hear you, Miss Joyce. Um, so 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 let's get started if it's okay. Brian was Brian was. Uh, hey, Miss Faye. Um, Brian was saying, um, to invite people to share this and, um, you, you might not want to do that now. You might want to wait till I get finished. Uh, uh, Brian, Mr. Don Evans says, Hey, oh, I appreciate it. He's finally. The only one that loves me. Brian says that Mr. Don is the only one that loves him. Kelly didn't, say hey. Kelly didn't even speak. I declare. Well, good. Like I said, it's good to be with you, and it's good just to have a light moment for just a second. Um, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pause once again, uh, being a part of this time that I truly believe that you have appointed and anointed and engineered. And God, I just ask for your favor tonight. Father, I pray that tonight, and as we begin uh, this series, Father, that once again, that you'll show up. And Father God, that you'll lead and you'll guide this time, not only in the, in the individuals that are watching in their home or, or, or at their work or wherever they may 
wherever they may be, Lord. And, and, and God, I ask that you enter Brian and I as we sit here in the studio, um, be with the technology and all that's involved. God, I pray that you give me your message tonight. I pray that your words are, that, that my words are your words, that my thoughts are your thoughts. And that, God, that you'll use this time, you'll use this text, and you'll use this message to draw us closer to you. And, Father, in the drawing, and, Lord, tonight, there, there, there might not need to be a drawing. There might need to be a dragon. So, Father, drag us to you tonight. You are our source of everything that we need. So, Father God, I pray once again that you'll show favor and that you'll turn your face to us tonight. And once again, Lord, this time is yours. Have your will and way in our life. And as always, we pray and we come together asking that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Miss Carrie. And uh, Miss Emily, Mr. Jean, God bless you. Thank you. And Brian, your mama says that she loves you. So I'm going to put my phone away. And I invite you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Um, it's the first book of the New Testament. Um, so Matthew chapter 5. Now, we were, we, we were in and we were a part of uh, the, the, the message this morning that I've titled that we're going to be moving through. Now, we're, 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 we're zeroing in on the Beatitudes from Jesus Christ, the words that he said on top of the Mount of Beatitudes that is, that is, that is commonly called today. And it is part of, the Beatitudes are part of one of the greatest sermons that Jesus ever preached simply called the Sermon on the Mount. If anybody has been a Christian for any length of time, they are familiar in some way, shape, form, or fashion, and especially as we move and navigate through the Sermon on the Mount, you are aware of the Sermon on the Mount. This time that we'll be spending together that is ordained by God and will be directed by God, I've simply titled Our Attitude About the Beatitudes. This morning we launched out, not in the Beatitudes, but we hung out in Matthew 5 verses 1 and 2. And in just a few moments, I'm going to read those verses again tonight and continue laying a little bit of groundwork. I truly believe and I ask of you for your patience and your prayers tonight and in this series. But I truly believe that we need to be regaining strength and momentum as the church of the bride, as the bride of Christ. I truly believe that we need to be reminded Based from the words of Jesus Christ, we need to be reminded about how we are to be acting and how we are to be being as Christians of the church of Jesus Christ. I believe, I truly believe through prayer and planning and preparing that we are exactly where we need to be tonight when, and in this series, as Soldier Bay Baptist Church and as our extended church family through other congregations that join us virtually. The Beatitudes were spoken by Jesus Christ to those that were already Jesus' disciples. I shared with you this morning, and there's going to be just a few times that I'll reference this morning, but there's going to be a lot more uh, new information tonight that I want to share with you and kind of get off of my heart that has been placed on my heart so we can go into this series having a better understanding about what is going on when Jesus sits down and speaks to his 
disciples. When he begins to speak these words, he is speaking to those that are already citizens of God's kingdom. He is speaking to those that are already children of God's family. I truly believe, based upon the based upon the Sermon on the Mount, that the crowds came along with the committed disciples. I've, I, I shared with you this morning that Jesus is is, is always speaking to when uh, other than being apart from being with his Father. He is always speaking to the core, Peter, James, and John, the committed, his disciples, the crowds, the communities, and the congregations. When he is speaking, it is to one of those five categories of grouping of people. The Sermon on the Mount is simply the words of Christ, and the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount is described by the Son of God. And what he is describing here is the kind of people that the disciples, you and I, he is describing those that are reborn, blood-bought Christians. He is describing the kind of people like you and I that we are to be and that we should be being as we go out into the life, into the, the everyday activities that we encounter on a daily basis. I've always said that it's easy to come to church and be a Christian, but it's hard sometimes and it's difficult sometimes to get up on Monday morning and to go through Monday through Saturday remaining, and I I hope you know what I mean by that, remaining a Christian. It is at the very beginning of the Sermon on the Mount that we hear, instead of at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, it's at the very beginning of the Sermon on the Mount that we hear the benefits and the blessings that the Christian receives by being a child of God. This morning, I paused and I dealt with, I feel like I did it at both services, I'm not sure that I did, but I paused and dealt with the comparison of Moses and Jesus. Moses on Mount, and I'm not re-preaching that for sake of time. Moses being, Moses on Mount Sinai being compared to Jesus with the Sermon on the Mount. But I want to go ahead and repeat and share with you something tonight that I really want you to get a hold of so we will have a better understanding as we go through and navigate into the Beatitude. Now, I have set this up and beat this up enough that I hope we, you understand what we're getting ready to go into. But there's, a, there's one major difference that Moses was dealing with that Jesus is not dealing with, and that is Moses was dealing with the law to all of the children of Israel. Jesus is not dealing with the law. Jesus is dealing with, uh, Jesus is dealing with the righteousness that comes from placing our faith in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus is not dealing with law. He is not dealing with rules. He is not dealing with conduct. What Jesus is dealing with is our character. What Jesus is talking about when we launch out into the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, it has nothing to do with outward action, but it has everything to do when, when we look at it, when we read it, when we hear it, it has nothing to do with outward action, but it has everything to do with an inward attitude. Legalists taught then, and legalists teach now, that righteousness was based upon something that was external. <coughs> it was a matter of obeying the rules and regulations. Righteousness was measured by praying, by fasting, by giving, by tithing, or whatever you want to put in that category. It was based upon what what the individual done outwardly. Jesus is not dealing with this. Jesus is not talking about this. And what Jesus is talking about is not a righteousness that is measured not by conduct, but it's a righteousness that is that is being measured by a place called Calvary on an old rugged cross. Jesus teaches that 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 it, Jesus teaches not about the conduct, but Jesus deals with the character of the Christian. And in Matthew five one two, I want us to look at this again. 
And then I'm going to shift gears with you just a little bit. Are y'all okay? In Matthew 5, 1, look at this, look at your Bible, please. And the Bible says, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. Now, Jesus is a little repetitive here, or repeating here. Jesus is not teaching about conduct. Jesus is teaching about character. In other words, Jesus is not talking about what is memorized in your head. Jesus is talking about who matters in your heart. Always understand that conduct, that our conduct flows out of our character. I'm not judging. I'm just going to state something that's very factual. You can tell a lot about somebody's character based upon their conduct. I want to give you an illustration, if I may, and it's a little bit personal. The Pharisees, there were 600 plus laws that individuals was to keep. Basically, that what that is what determined, in, according to their doctrine and their teaching and thinking, that is what determined righteousness. So in other words, they dealt with these 600 plus laws that pertain to, stay with me, that pertain to the, my, the minute details of someone's character, of someone's conduct. And I remembered, or I remember, and I don't know if you can relate to this or not, but I remember thinking that if I became a Christian, that if I got saved, there were some things that that I was that I was concentrating on that were there were things that didn't matter but at that point in time they really mattered to me and it was basically minute details and and in that thinking and in that um in, the, in, in that mode of not responding to the gospel when I heard it, basically what I was saying was I was more concerned about what other people thought than I was concentrating on what Jesus thought about me and what God thought about me and how much God loved me enough to send his son to die on an old rugged cross for me. So what was hindering and holding me back was those minute details. And what ended up happening, what ended up happening is when Jesus Christ came into my life and it was major, and when I made Jesus major in my life, Jesus took care of all the minute details. Does that make sense? The things that I was worrying about, the things that I was concentrating on, Jesus took care of that. Can, can I can I get real, real with you? I, one thing that was hindering me back, one thing that was holding me back, was my friends. Well, if I do this, I can't, I can't, I can't go there with them. I can't be there with them. I can't hang out with them. What would they, what would they think of me? Uh, I, hey, hey, I'll get picked on. I, I'll get called names, a Bible thumper, Jesus freak. I'll be called, you know, I'll be picked on. And what ended up happening was Jesus took care of my friends. He just took care of it. I can't explain it. I can't give you specifics. But I can tell you that Jesus took care of the minute details that was holding me back from having a relationship with him. I don't know. I hadn't planned on saying any of that, really. And maybe somebody just needs to hear it tonight. But the little things that was holding me back, God took care of. There's a movie, and I would love for you to comment if if you know what I'm getting ready to what I'm getting ready to talk about. There's a movie that is absolutely one of my favorite movies of all times, and it was made in 1941. And the title of that movie is Sergeant York, played by Gary Cooper. I absolutely 
can sit and I can watch that movie over and over and over. And I know I need to hurry up, but I can sit there. I can watch that movie right over and over and over again. I absolutely love the movie, Sergeant Yore. And it was on yesterday. And I didn't have the time to sit and watch it in its entirety, so I recorded. I have it on DVD, but I recorded it because I can't deal with commercials. I, re I don't know about y'all, but I just don't like commercials. I don't. Y'all pray for my patience. But in that movie, Gary Cooper plays the character Alvin Yore. And there's a pastor in that movie, and it's played by Mr. Walter Brenning. And in that movie, Walter Brennan, his name is Pastor Pyle, P-I-L-E. And, and, and I love the dialect in the movie. And Pastor Pyle, Alvin York is, is plowing with an old mule on top ground. He don't have any bottom ground just yet in the movie. But he's plowing around these rocks. And Pastor Powell goes to Alvin York. And in essence and in short, he's witnessing to him. And I'm not going to give you the entire di the, the, the dialogue between those two. But in, in witnessing the, to, to, to Alvin York, Pastor Powell says, I want you to look over there. He said, you see that big oak tree over there? He said, that tree's been here a long time. He said, matter of fact, he says, when your, when your Paul was just a boy, he said, that tree was there. And he says, it looks like and it appears that that tree is just there living off the land. He said, but that is not what makes that tree mighty. That is not where that tree gets its strength. Now listen to this. He said, that oak tree, and I'm adding a few words, but he said, that oak tree exist because it's gaining what it needs off of something else outside of itself. He says it has a great root system. Did you hear that? It's gaining what it needs to exist based upon something outside of itself. Those roots that are in the ground. And he goes on to tell him, he says, I want you to think about the squirrels that are in the woods. He said, they'd be in a mess of trouble if there wasn't something guiding them to store up food for the winter. He said, Alvin, he said, think about the birds. He said, what would happen if they didn't have a sense of direction to fly south for the winter? He said, Alvin, he said, think about the bees. He said, they'd be in a heap of trouble if once they left the hive that they were unable to have any type of direction whatsoever to get back to the hive. And Alvin looked at Pastor Pyle. He said, I don't know about all that. He said, I ain't no squirrel, and I ain't no bird, and I sure ain't no bee. You see, God has, and God will take care of all the details in our life. If we'll love Him and if we'll surrender to Him, our character, our character will please God. Our character will be pleasing to God. Our character will not be pleasing to God, not based upon something that we've done ourselves, but what God has done within us. We've been talking about joy and we've been talking about happiness. And the difference between the two. Which leads me to Matthew 5 3. And in Matthew 5 3, and by the way, I'm closing. In Matthew 5 3, I just want you to look at the very first word. The Bible says that Jesus said, Blessed. Blessed. I believe I wasn't there and neither were you, were you. But I truly believe when Jesus started the Beatitudes and when Jesus said, blessed, that all eyes 
were riveted on Jesus. When he spoke, when he began that day on the side of that mountain, seated with his disciples seated around him, the very first word he said was blessed. And the word that he said there is the Latin word that we get beatus. Or excuse me, the Latin word beatus, which is where we get beatitudes. And what's unique about that word is we don't truly understand the power and the strength of that word. We don't understand the potential behind that word that Jesus said to his committed that day. We don't understand the power of that word when we read it in the Sermon on the Mount. You see, the word that Jesus used is not a word that's meant for humans. It is a word that is only meant for the gods and the dead. It, would, it should never be used to reference a human. But Jesus did use that word. And that word that Jesus used, that blessed implies an inner satisfaction and sufficiency that does not depend upon outward circumstance for happiness. The Greek word that's translated there is, yes, the word happy. And oftentimes we'll say, happy are the poor in spirit. Happy are the peacemakers. But we are not doing that word justice when we just say that that word simply means happy. It's simply misleading. You see, happiness is a subjective state. But Jesus here, when he says blessed and blessed and blessed eight times, he's not using it as a subjective state, but he's using it as an objective judgment about the committed, about those that are faithful to Jesus Christ. Jesus is declaring not what they may feel happy, but Jesus is declaring what God thinks of them. And sir, ma'am, that should be a reminder to us today of what God thinks of us. And on that account, we are blessed. And this is exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ offers to each and everybody that places their faith, that places their trust in Him. Simply put, the eight Beatitudes are the attitudes that ought to be in our life. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this time. God, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for the reminders of who you are and who we are. And Lord, thank you for the reminder tonight of how God looks at us and in that manner that we are in and how God looks at us. Help us to realize, Lord, that we are truly blessed. Father, help us with our character. We have to have you. Lord, we need you. And so, Father, I pray once again that you do in our life only what you can do. Father, change us, charge us, convict us, and help us be the Christian that you have us to be. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good and all the time. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Continue to be safe and continue, please, to be the church.